This is Comcast Local Edition. I'm Jack Hansen. We're aboard the USS Hornet. We are in the mobile quarantine unit. This is where astronauts originally were brought because they were afraid the germs would be coming back from far, far away from the moon. Dr. Yvonne Cagle is with us right now. She is a flight surgeon and a colonel in the United States Air Force. Yvonne, you are involved in a lot of the medical aspects of flight and what might be contaminating some of our astronauts. Is that right? That's absolutely correct. Yeah. What did you find out? Wow. Well, right now I'm doing quite a bit of research through the Ames Research Center at Stanford University, um, looking at the effects of long duration uh, space flight on the human body. And we've discovered some absolutely amazing things. For example? Um, well, we find that our bone density is reduced, that our muscles tend to atrophy or thin out. We become somewhat deconditioned, and our immune system is suppressed to a certain degree as well. I should say stressed. It still mm -hmm. works, but not quite as um, robustly. Well, these obviously would be problems if we're going on long space flights, right? That's right. I mean, to the moon is 240,000 miles, but if you start going to Mars or someplace else, you've got all these other conditions to contend with. That's right. So it's important for us to be able to maintain the, the our stamina so that when we do arrive at a planet like Mars, we're able to not just enjoy the view, but actually enjoy the view. Right? Actually climb yeah. out and do surface operations, and then of course return yeah. safely home. Yeah, enjoy the view. You want to go to Mars. Absolutely, you? Yes, yeah. yes. It's the goal of people who are in these these programs to travel out as far as you can. Absolutely. There doesn't seem to be any fear. It's all interest, curiosity, what? What, what? what makes a person different who really wants to go out there? I think it's um, not having any limits to your mind, to your dreams, to your vision and aspirations. And I think a huge part of it is really the journey. The journey truly is the glory. Uh -huh. That's where the adventure is. That's where the discoveries really turn up. And that's what fortifies our life and, and enhances what we can do to improve our existence. What got you from Novato High School? into being a flight surgeon and into dreams and aspirations to go to Mars. What motivated you? Um, the first was when I was 12 years old watch, watching Neil Armstrong walk on the moon. Uh -huh. um, I, I just thought it would be fascinating to be able to see him, but then I thought, wow, what must his view be like looking back on Earth at me? And I wanted that view. Uh, my father retired Air Force, um, worked in the hospital, and so I pursued a career in flight surgery with the Air Force, and they paid mm -hmm. for my medical school, mm -hmm. and I paid back in time. Um, so as a flight surgeon, I was able to fly in a lot of the high-performance fighters and really experience the effects of accelerations and gravity forces in the absence of gravity on my body and began to ask questions about how does the body learn so brilliantly to adapt to these changes. And I realized the only way to really get the answers was to go there and experience it for myself. Okay, you went to Russia also, right, to talk to them about their space program and medical right. problems that their cosmonauts might face. That's correct. Yeah, what did you learn when you went with it to the Soviet Union? Well, the Russians um, right now have the most experience with long-duration space flight. So they were able to educate us quite a bit. I on should say the former Soviet Union. You went to Russia, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah on um, uh, many of the uh, uh, challenges to the body that they experienced and some of the um, solutions that they came up with for allowing their cosmonauts to stay in space for a long period of time. Were you able to share information on both sides to, to help both countries? A quality exchange, absolutely. Really? So we were able to share not just information and data, but technology and ideas, and we still work together collaboratively on that. Well, the Russians have always done very interesting things scientifically. They've had a great program and so forth. And combining that, I would think, with the United States, you can really create something. Well, we've got the Soyuz program right now. That's right. Combining with this, with the space station and so forth. Uh, have you reported or have been reported any problems of people living in that space station? Well, nothing that um, certainly is not fixable at this time. Uh -huh. The station supports us very well. Um, our challenge is just the absence of gravity, being in a gravity eliminated environment for a long period of okay. time. Okay, nice to see you, Vaughn. Thanks very much for being I here. I appreciate the time. We like being in here in the MQF. Excellent. I like to this say is that, wonderful. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Comcast Local Edition. I'm Jack Hansen on the USS Hornet. Thanks so much for watching. 
This is Comcast Local Edition. I'm Jack Hansen. We're aboard the USS Hornet. And Yvonne Cagle is with us right now. She is a flight surgeon, a doctor, a woman who's been involved in the space program. We're standing in front of the mobile quarantine facility, and this is where astronauts were originally taken to make sure they didn't bring back germs from other planets, right? And That's from Mars correct. and Moon or wherever else they were going to come from. Nice to have you here, Yvonne. It's wonderful to be okay, here. Okay, now you. you are a person who's been involved in the space program from the medical point of view. You're a colonel and so forth in the Air Force. Tell me about some of the work that you've been involved in. Well, we've been trying to characterize exactly what happens to the human body when you've been in space for short periods and extended periods of time mm -hmm. and we found that the human body adapts to being in space but over time it becomes a stressful environment not having gravity around and we start to lose bone mass muscle strength cardiovascular deconditioning and our immune system becomes somewhat stressed mm -hmm. so we're more vulnerable to being exposed to different viruses and bacteria and also we don't know the environment of space so we don't know what we may have on us or bring back in us and that's why a quarantine facility is very important to kind of screen our body and make sure that we don't cross-contaminate environments. How did you get started in the sciences? Wow. You had some encouragement, undoubtedly, right? Very much so. Um, yeah. I, my dad worked in the Air Force in the hospital, and so I had a lot of exposure to flight medicine, and I really fell in love with the human body and, and how it's able to be so robust and so versatile. So I graduated with a degree in biochemistry and then on to medical school on an Air Force scholarship. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, once I became a flight surgeon, there was no longer any limit to what I wanted to, t to do with my dreams. And okay. that's where I took it all the way to the limit and beyond into space. Okay, and that's your ambition is to go into space too. Very at the same much time. so. Okay, you've also been involved in the flight program and other capacities also. Yes, sir. And they are? Well, in the flight program itself, um, I've been part of the process of um, looking at what criteria are necessary to make sure someone is medically fit to be an astronaut. Mm -hmm. And um, that has to do with um, basic fitness, conditioning, nutrition. But in order to actually be an astronaut, it requires academics as well. Math and science are very important. And so part of my role is to kind of be an ambassador of space and to let young people of all ages, um, men and women, know that they too can become an astronaut. It's important to stay in school, study, become familiar and comfortable with the sciences. And to be an astronaut, it really requires a master's degree in math, science, or engineering, three years of experience in that area, and then fill out the application and be ready to climb on board and strap in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, put, climb on board, it's that simple, right? That's right. My philosophy yeah. is belted for safety, but no bounds to your dreams. Well, that's a wonderful philosophy to have. You Thank know. you. Uh, when you go around, you speak at different schools, I know, and, and what kind of response do you get from young people when you talk to them? Oh, um, it's just really exciting. Our young people are just so inspired and motivated. They're brilliant. I have a tough time teaching young people today because they're educating me on what they know and with the internet and the web and just interacting with Mm -hmm. environments like this kind of a splashdown 2004, they really are very informed. So I'm very excited about our future and where we're going to take our, our exploration into space. I know I give my 10 year old son my cell phone to adjust, so I know that uh, the knowledge that young people have is accelerating at a very quick pace. That's right. Yeah. And, and how is this going to apply, do you think, to the space program? I know we're thinking about going to Mars in not too many years, right. but all these young people will be involved in this kind of Thing, won't they? That's right. And the language of technology is becoming a very versatile, conversant language for our young people. And what's really exciting is just having these discussions about exploration and what it's going to take to go to the moon, mm -hmm. back to the moon and to Mars and beyond, mm -hmm. really stimulates a lot of ideas and technology that we can benefit from right here, even before we take it into space. Great seeing you, Vaughn. Come Thank back you. and see us anytime. I'd love see to. See you on Mars. I'll be waving. It's Gas Local Edition. I'm Jack. Hansen, thank you so much for watching.